You know what we should do right this very minute? We should go to Costa Rica. Come on, let's go. The cloud forest of Costa Rica, a magical land where lush green mountains reach up to the heavens and clouds lazily float by. We are here in search of this creature, the resplendent Quetzal, a bird that at first sight seems so unreal, so mystical, that you begin to question the reality of what you're seeing. And at the precise moment of acceptance, this beautiful living work of art takes a leap of faith and simply vanishes without a sound, leaving you dumbfounded in a wake of its beauty. It's time to take our heads out of the clouds for just a bit and head down to a local resort where repeating rows of fractal-like succulents become just as hypnotizing as they are beautiful. But this miniature landscape is what captures my attention. On a lower level, it resembles a tiny forest where the trees are covered in small purple flowers. A very small bird frequents these flowers, and for size reference, here's my finger. And here he is now, the centillant hummingbird, a tiny creature that is only found in Costa Rica and Panama. Remember, this little bird is about as large as the first portion of my index finger, and this tiny little world is his giant forest so full of life and amazing colors. And speaking of amazing colors, Look at this little guy's throat when the light hits it just right. What an amazing little creature. But this little oasis overflowing with floral beauty has other regular visitors, like this long-tailed silky flycatcher. What a beautiful bird. And it's simply amazing how you can actually see each individual strand that makes up the whole of this bird's beautiful array of feathers. And apparently this bird has a very sharp beak that's capable of destroying small branches with just one bite. And like many other birds, this bird enjoys dancing in the rain. Right next door, and you find this beautiful, fiery-throated hummingbird who's also enjoying the nice, cool rain. But it isn't really living up to its name down here in this thick underbrush. The light has to be just right to get that fiery throat to appear. Not quite the fiery throat, but look at those brilliant iridescent colors. Wow. Each little feather is like its own multifaceted jewel. It's just amazing. And in this last shot, we get a tiny glimpse of that fiery throat. And shooting at f2.8 didn't quite create enough depth of field to get the entire bird in focus here. There's another bird in this area that gets its namesake from the magical element of fire. This is the flame-throated warbler, and what an absolute beauty it is. And just like every other warbler out there, getting a good clean shot of this bird is tough. These little birds bounce all over the place, and this one was busy bouncing in and out of the shade looking for tasty insects to eat. But if you have a little bit of patience and a little bit of luck on your side, you might catch a lucky shot like this where this little show off shows us exactly how it gets its name. <laughs> what an absolute stunner. And yes, this shot was taken at 12,800 ISO. That's the beauty of the A9 and Topaz Denoise AI. I've talked about Topaz AI Denoise in the past. It's a fantastic tool that will eliminate any sort of high ISO anxiety that you might have. All right, let's see if we can find that amazing bird, the resplendent Quetzal. Off we go, twisting and turning through the lush mountainous terrain until we arrive at our secret Quetzal location. High up on the hill, we have the perfect vantage point and we want those birds right here. This tree to the left is an avocado tree and avocados just happen to be the Quetzal's favorite food. And it isn't long until a young male shows up. Look at this bird. Have you ever seen anything like it? Simply incredible. And a little bit to the left on another moss-soaked branch, and we find a beautiful female. With plenty of food and a beautiful female hanging around, the odds of seeing a male are looking very good. And a few moments later, I catch a glimpse of iridescent green swaying in the breeze. It's the tail of a male quetzal. With the tail, these birds can be over a meter tall. And this boy, he's playing hard to get as he moves to another branch and once again gives us the cold shoulder. I guess this bird isn't ready for its moment in the spotlight just yet. We'll come back to this one a little bit later. Let's head out to a different location, overflowing with lush plant life and incredible birds like this chlorophonia who is busy eating a peach. Absolutely incredible. This is like a scene from a beautifully illustrated children's book. You have this amazing bird painted with rich, vibrant color, a big juicy peach, and me standing on the hillside watching it all unfold with a childlike wonder. Humbling to say the least. But there are other birds bouncing around here. Let's see what we can find. 
For some reason, I was fascinated with this little bird the moment I saw it. This is a flower piercer. And look at that odd little beak. It uses its beak like a pair of scissors and it pierces the stalks of flowers to drink the nectar. How awesome is that? But what's this? Ooh, a magnificent hummingbird. Let's take a closer look. Wow, what a beautiful hummingbird. And again, F28's not really giving me enough depth of field here. I'm just too close to these birds. Let's switch to the A7R4 and see how much detail we can capture with that camera. Ah, that's a perfect pose because the entire bird's head is parallel to the camera's sensor. Let's zoom in a bit and check out that detail. Wow, this is one of the many reasons I love photography. I would never be able to see these fine details with my naked eye. Look at all of those intricate feathers and that light dusting of golden pollen on the bird's throat. That's just incredible. And a slight turn of the head shows off some brilliant color. And it's pretty easy to see why this bird is called the Magnificent Hummingbird. It's just magnificent. But there are plenty of other beautiful little hummingbirds that call this fascinating slice of paradise home. Like this white-throated mountain gem. What a cutie. And our Magnificent Hummingbird is back to showing off and trying to steal all my attention. And when a bird is as beautiful as this one, it's pretty easy to do. But this cute little female white-throated mountain gem is also hard to resist as she looks me right in the eye. And then you have this tiny hummingbird showing its impressive wingspan. And check out the spider web stuck to its beak and head. Hummingbirds will eat spiders for protein, and then sometimes they use the actual spider web as nesting material. It helps the nest kind of stretch out. Okay, okay, we already know you're magnificent, you magnificent hummingbird. There's no need to continue showing off. Well, yeah, might as well, because you're beautiful. But then I see a flash of color to my left, and a bird that rivals them all comes flying into the frame. This unreal looking display of vibrant colors is a violet-eared hummingbird. Look at the colors on this bird, it's just mind blowing. And of course, it was nice enough to fan out that beautiful tail to give us a better look, all while looking us right in the eye. If this beauty was trying to put me under some type of spell, it worked, because for a brief moment in time, I forgot about everything but this beautiful creature hovering right in front of my face. That's one of the real beauties of photography, getting lost in those precious moments but the resplendent Quetzal calls, and that is a call I must answer. There's our mystical bird. It doesn't even look real, and it's very easy to see why these birds were so highly prized by ancient Mayan and Aztec cultures. If you were caught killing one of these back then, the penalty was death. While this one was busy hiding, another Quetzal was eager for a photo shoot as its tail lazily floats in an updraft. It casually looks over its shoulder as if to say, yes, I know I'm beautiful, but have you seen my amazing tail? The wind lifts the bird's amazing tail, and once again, the wonderful natural world puts me under its spell. The wind settles, and this magical bird changes positions as if saying, isn't this better? And yes, it is. But our other Quetzal has moved to a slightly better perch where we can clearly see that amazing red chest. Wow. And once again, this bird's beauty is simply undeniable. And it isn't long until this beautiful bird hops right out into the spotlight and just casually regards me with a very curious glance. This bird is looking directly at me as if it's trying to determine if I'm even worth its time. I guess I passed the test because the bird turns its head and poses, giving us this simply amazing profile shot. And yet again, I'm put under this bird's magical spell. All of these amazing experiences make a person very hungry, so we enjoy a late breakfast of great food with amazing people, and right outside the window, an emerald toucanet who is, well, I, I guess, looking up at better things. When these beautiful birds aren't busy staring at the sky, they like to eat my favorite fruit, bananas. This little oasis on the hillside is practically overrun with birds in every shape, size, and color. Like this wonderful looking silver-throated tanager. Look at that. I've never seen anything like this one. And this amazing summer tanager. And this equally impressive scarlet tanager. There's a lot of tanagers hanging out here in the rainforest. And of course, there are plenty of gorgeous little hummingbirds buzzing about too. This one gives us a nice flash of color. And if I zoom in just a little bit, you can actually see some tiny bugs stuck to this bird's beak. Wow, that's just crazy. But this bird really grabs my attention. This is an acorn woodpecker. I really like the colors on this bird. It's full of nice contrasts. 
Let's take a closer look. Wow, look at that eye. That really cool looking red cap and all the alternating black and white color patterns. Do you ever wonder why some birds look the way they do? I know I do. And this one really has me thinking, but you know, I don't really have an explanation for it. It just is. And it's beautiful. Whoa. I'm not entirely sure that this is a friendly look and take note that because this bird was close, an aperture of 5.6 did not provide enough depth of field to get the whole bird's face in focus. Only the beak is in focus here, but I still love the look this bird has given me. And it would appear as if luck was on my side this morning because a male quetzal suddenly appeared in the trees to my left. So we patiently sit and wait, hoping this beautiful creature will once again grace us with its magnificent display of color. And our patience was well rewarded because this living work of art flew right out into the open and landed on a branch just a few meters away. And again, it was hard to mentally focus when faced with such overwhelming natural beauty. I even found myself pulling my face away from the camera just to sit and watch this bird with my own eyes but then I remembered that I had to grab a few more shots of this beauty before it silently disappeared back into those gorgeous lush green hills overflowing with life. The Costa Rica cloud forest is definitely an experience I will never forget and I can't wait to go back. Wow, what an amazing experience in the cloud forest. Easily one of my favorite places to be. Reminds me a lot of the Pacific Northwest. It's like, it's familiar because of the moss and the trees, but at the same time, it's not familiar at all, especially when you see the birds like the resplendent quetzal. Resplendent. Resplendent quetzal. I probably mispronounced it every single time in that video. Um, check out my shirt. See this? Osprey meets the Kraken, inspired by that famous Japanese wave. I actually made this. Took a little inspiration from my daughter. If you want one, you can get one. They're down below. Yeah, go, go do that if you like it. If not, whatever. Let me know what you thought of the video. Leave some comments down below and leave me those questions. I've been gathering up all these questions because I'm doing question and answer videos now and everybody seemed to really like that. So leave me some questions down below. Maybe they'll show up in the next video. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Most important of all though, share this video, especially if you've never seen the Quetzal and you want somebody else to see it because it's an amazing bird. Share it, let everybody see that. Um, did I say click thumbs up? thumbs up? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Who knows? Whatever. Do the stuff that you always do. I always appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later.